G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So today is part two of the floating tanks. Um, I'm calling them the floating tanks. They're not literally floating, but I'm uh, the way I've painted them, I'm just trying to make it, give it the slight illusion that they are floating. Um, so I'll show you that first up. And also I've got something really funny to show you. I hope you guys can see the humorous side of this because I think it's hilarious. Alright, so if you recall back to not yesterday's video, the day before, shout outs to yesterday's members video. Um, I was working on this bench and I told you guys I couldn't do action shots because I couldn't find my tripod. Are you guys ready to see where my tripod is? And I swear on my mother's life I have not moved this tripod. This is where it is. This is where it was when I recorded the video that you guys saw on Sunday. Alright, so let's just pan the room. right there it was literally less than a meter away from me when i was making that video there's the table there's the tripod you can't even make that up but anyway tripod's going to come in handy today because we need to uh use our handy dandy laser so uh, i've got to get the timber frames you guys haven't even got to see the paint job yet all right guys so black and white the idea is they sit like this on the wall. The wall is painted white, so that rack should kind of, those that bit there should kind of disappear to the eye, and you'll only see this front rail. Um, now we need to screw these in. I managed to scavenge some stuff from work. I always scavenge bolts. The only annoying thing about this is none of these are actually matching. They're all different heads. Um, and they're not, they're not water, oh that one's galvan, oh, no, they're not galvanized or anything so they are susceptible to the moisture but up under here they shouldn't really get wet at all. Um, it's only the stuff near the ground that I really worry too much about getting um, galvanized bolts. Alright so let's go set this laser up. So this, this is hurts my feelings. Can you see how that's off center to one side? Um, I just have to do that because of the piece of timber on the back. Um, I'm, put, I'm dry screwing it, so um, the worst case is I've just got to take it off. And I can actually cut the timber on the back longer and then move it across and make just the timber go to that rail. Um, it's what I should have done and looking on looking at it now like I've made that mistake, but I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna put the tank on it and then if I re if it really bothers me I'll change it um, I didn't really think about the fact these walls are 600 centers and This this rack is only 600 side to side and the inside of the back is only like 580 so um, luckily I've got like a hundred and twenty mil um, bolt in there but if it was any white I'm only just hitting the studs but so I'll show you how I level it if you haven't used the laser before I'm sure some of you have some of you haven't so you see I've got a pipe here and see the little pencil line on the bottom there so that laser there is in line with the pencil line so then I just move that pipe to that side and then you just knock that side down into the pencil line and now that's level and you can see that the front's got to come up a mile not so much that side all right so um, I'm gonna have to get creative with packing the front because it's not it's the whole thing's twisted the idea is I'll pack the front and then the weight of the tank will actually twist it into level. Alright guys, so that's level. Oh, I've got to retighten a bolt. Um, so I've got the big... Um, I've got the big um, bugle screws in there. And then also I've got two timber screws 
skew screwed so they're basically diagonal so even if it tries to rip out the two screws actually cross over each other they're they're both in that hole there um and it sh it it should be solid as a rock these tanks will only be like i think 40 kilos or something which is not a great deal i reckon i could probably stand on that if there wasn't a tank above it um like i say it's off center but I think it actually it'll work well because even though it's off center I don't need to access the corner of that tank whereas there's a fry tank there which is only um, one and a half foot uh, hang on yeah that's three foot total but the divider in the tank is at one and a half foot so I still need good access to that tank which that's going to give me um, I thinking I'm thinking of putting the skinny one here I don't know if I said in the video the other day I was going to put the skinny one here but today I've decided that I'm putting the skinny one here so anyway let's get stuck into that one hopefully that rail there is already level alright guys so this one's going here so um, that that rail there is already level so half the job's already done for us Oops. And don't stress about the um, pine going into the fish tank. After my extensive research of building a ridiculous amount of things along this wall, I've learned that the stingrays aren't bothered by the, the wood chips. Um, I mean literally extensive. This whole room, like all of these racks were put in after the stingrays were in that tank. So they, the stingrays, pretty much viewed the whole building of this room. The only rack that was in here was was these three tanks here. Well actually 12, 3, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, these tanks were here and so this whole room was built around the stingrays. That's kind of why I haven't jumped at getting rid of the stingray tank and taking it out. Because even though it is a problem and it needs repairing, I can't get to it. <laughs> Alright, so now I need to level this up. Um, I learnt with that one to level the front after the first screw because I couldn't actually get anything, any packing behind it when it was completely screwed up and I had to loosen the whole lot. So now I'm looking for... Where's my dumpy? I lost it guys. Come on, it must be right here somewhere. This is my life at work too by the way. Looking for stuff. Oh, what an annoyance. What an annoyance. There it is. Alright, so bottom we're going off the bottom of the hole here, I'm not marking it up, can't be bothered. Bottom of the hole. I feel like, yeah, that's, I think this one's going to be, this one's close to spot on without any, um, what do you call it, I was going to say exercise, without any other modifications. So I'm going to screw this off and then we'll do the next one. Alright guys, air pump moved up to there, I should really show you the air pump instead of pointing at the ground. Um, from there up to there it was in our way now no longer in our way and I actually like it better there because this airlift actually splashes a tiny bit of water as you can see by like the mold on the wall um, uh, every now and then I, I um, put white vinegar on that I just spray it just try and keep like the health risks down but anyway point being is um, let me show you how much water this moves when you first turn it on it actually moves more water because it's not trying to drag the water from the other end so like the the initial start up on this is pretty spectacular um, anybody who's seen my airlifts before this might not be that exciting but let's get this fish out of the way um, yes there's, a, there's actually a fish in that basket she's an absolute bitch I've tried her in a few tanks and she doesn't get along with anyone at all all right so you ready watch how this is an LP 
60 so it draws 60 watts of electricity so think about it think about a water pump that uses 60 watts of electricity and are you ready look how much water that moves um, I've done rough workings out and uh, when it's running it's somewhere between um, uh, what's the numbers 12,000 litres and 15,000 litres per hour but this initial startup when it's not when it's not drawing water and like the the equal the level in water level in the in the filter and the water level here is the same height I reckon that's closer to like 18,000 litres per hour um, it is actually insane if you see there's a plug there that's because I put two of these air lifts in here and it was just way too much flow like it was actually sucking the sump dry even with a hundred millimeter return onto the sump I couldn't get the water back into the sump quick enough to run two filters so I just dropped it back to one with a 60 instead of the twin 40s and now the twin LP 40s are actually on my koi pond so my my 15,000 litre koi pond runs on two 40 watt air pumps um, this is this is like one of the coolest things I've ever built if I'm going to be honest and it's my favorite thing about fish keeping is moving water with air I'm so fascinated by it and a lot of people don't understand it all right guys and that's the last one mounted up I don't know if I did I say this in the last clip I extended the um, air pipe on there and it actually gave me um, no splashing there and also I put the airline in the middle of the sponge filter and there's a sponge filter here to stop stop splashing out so I should have actually just eliminated my mold problem there and if I actually get I lost the off cut of PVC um, I should be able to get rid of most of these bubbles if I just add one more piece of pipe which are here let's see how much of the bubbles is delete? I'm actually interested to know. Uh, it's still pretty much the same. Um, on the koi pond, I've got one which runs like five meters of pipe after the air lifts, and like no bubbles come out the end. It's pretty cool, but at least this way we're not splashing anymore. Um, there's a janky connection there with like duct tape on it. I'm surprised it's actually holding, but it's not bubbling. Oh, actually, no, that's right. The pipe holds on there without the tape. The tape's just stopping the bubbles coming through. So I, I, I should have just eliminated the mold on that wall, which is a huge step. Um, I'm always wanting to make my fish room drier. Um, so it's a constant battle for everyone is mold. Um, like, the floor's constantly wet, like I've got fry on the ground and stuff, but oh, and this window here leaks. Most of that water there is actually for me doing water change. Um, when I water change these tubs, I just tip them on the ground. I can't be bothered using a hose. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap that one up there. Tomorrow's video might be an interesting one. It's either going to be... Uh, I don't know. Uh, the next two videos, in no particular order, is me putting these two, fit, fit, two, two foot tanks on the stands and the other one is me breaking down my power bill. Um, I got my power bill today, I went outside, I looked at my solar statistics, I, broke, I worked out how much solar I made, I worked out how much my bill was, I worked out how much I saved, I worked out how much went back into the grid and I worked out how much synergy stinges me and doesn't give me enough money for my solar. <laughs> but anyway, that's tomorrow's video or the day after, one of the two. But I've got most of the rest of the week planned ahead, which is great news because sometimes finding content can be stressful. And um, you guys, can you guys tell that I thrive when I do little projects like this? Um, if you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. If you are here for this series, hit the subscribe button, hey. Um, chance to win a $200 gift card. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.